Today's youth need teachers, volunteers, and most of all, well, they need you. I'm Doug Edwards, and I'm going to be talking with real youth mentors and students to give you the knowledge you need to be the best youth worker possible. This is Youth Worker on Fire. So it's no mystery that I'm by vocational, not even by vocational. Basically, I get to do the podcast as a volunteer thing. So I work at another job too. I work at a place called uh, Bay Pharmacy. We do long term care, and then we have young guys come in from college. So we got this one guy who, a man genius, a young man genius, and he comes in, but he loves to tell jokes and stuff. He goes to a conservative Christian uh, university up north. So he comes in, he says, Doug, are there any nuns in the Bible? Now, for you Catholic people, I hope you don't re- you realize this is a joke, and, and uh, he's handing us to me, and I'm going, none that I know of, thinking I was really being funny. He said, well, of course there is. He said, Jacob was the son of Nun. <laughs> so we got a good chuckle out of that. So all of that came up because of this. The average person who doesn't know anything about the Bible or Scripture would not even know that those could be jokes. They wouldn't even know the context in which those things came from. And so Psalm 78, 2 through 6 says this, For I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will not hide these truths from our children. I repeated that, of course. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders, for he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. And they, in turn, will teach their own children. You get that? We'll teach children, our children, our grandchildren, and they will, in turn, teach theirs. And so, (laughs) they will at least have a context if they decide to make some jokes out of certain things just to keep, you know, smiling in life. Everything cannot be doom, doom and gloom, even though many times it feels that way. But it's imperative what you're doing is feeding and preparing that next generation, giving them information. It's important that you do this in your student ministry, whether you're full-time or a volunteer, whether you're a parent or a grandparent, you've got uh, your own student ministry at home because there's your homeschooling or you've got a lot of children. It's imperative, important that you do those things. Thought you would like that scripture today, and hopefully we got a little bit of a chuckle out of you. So don't forget the importance of what you're doing. Our students, this next generation, does not know the context in which the church is coming from. I heard on a show out of Canada, uh, it was a fun show, it's the the storage collectors, they they go in and they salvage, salvage collectors, and they go in and salvage stuff for buildings, things that are valuable, things that other people will buy for movie sets and homes and different things like that. And they went into a church, and they, the church is going to turn the place into a, a brewery and a, a restaurant. And so they said, listen, we, we can't use all this. Can you sell all these pews for us? You know, we're going to keep some of the stained glass, but you can take some of the stained glass as well. And it's a beautiful old church. And uh, he said, yes. And one of the comments he made was that there's going to be tens of thousands of churches in Canada that are going to be closing, so there's going to be lots of things like this that we're going to be salvaging and selling. Now, I don't know where he was getting his information. We do know old churches, old established churches with old points of views and not reaching the next generation have closed their doors in many places throughout the world. Europe, when they went through World War I, then World War II, it's kind of like, is this ever going to end? Why are we getting pounded? Many people became atheists or agnostics and 
because of those wars and because of the devastation. But the true church rose to the top. They didn't meet in the old buildings. Many of them met in homes and still meet in homes. Uh, There was a place in England where they actually, uh, in London, one of my students had been there and wrote me back and said, that I I think it was called uh, Old Joe's Church or Joe's Church or something like that, something uh, strange like that. And they did actually meet in a bar. They cleaned the whole thing up on like a, a pub on a Saturday night, and then they would have services there. They've done some things like that in the United States. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not telling you that it's right because you may hate that idea. I know people who do, but they are trying to reach a next generation. They're trying to tell the stories to the next generation. So they have context in order to laugh about some of the things that are funny compared to our own generation and also learn these serious things that help them understand a God world view in this generation and the next generation and the next generation. It's all about teaching them the truth about the Bible. Okay, guys, we'll see you next time. Youth Worker on Fire. We'll see you. You've been listening to the Youth Worker on Fire podcast. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and tell your friends. Also, leave a comment and tell us what you think. Stay tuned for more informative episodes.